Janendai logged off and grinned. He'd arrived nice and early at the decrepit pay-as-you-go computer cafe. And despite its incredibly slow connection, he'd managed to find a job for the day before they'd all been taken. Lucrative work too, with little investment up front for materials and plenty of opportunity to scam some extras. With a nod to the proprietor, he slung his green bag over his shoulder and took the three strides to the door. He shoved his feet into the pair of motorised rollerblades that were released from their docking point as he paid the microcredit. His signature code was now combined with the unique code of those blades and he'd be charged for the time he used them. While the blades glided towards his destination, he imagined what the next few days would be like. He had work, he'd have credits, and he'd be able to hire an apartment for more than one night, maybe a week. No more carrying his world around on his shoulder. And if he was canny with the scams, he'd be able to choose the furnishing for his medium stay home. Life was definitely improving. The blades slowed down as they turned the corner into Demugger's Alley, as it was known locally. Not an alley, but a wide pedestrianised street connecting the north and south of the city. Jam-packed with Demuggers. People pronounced Demugger differently. Some with an emphasis on the da, some on dem, and others on mugger. His grand had told him it was short for democracy muggers, a development from the charity muggers of her youth who stood around touting for donations to charities, the chuggers. Whatever their origin, they were a physically and emotionally difficult bunch to pass through quickly. He checked his wrist. According to his biotech tattoo, it was 15 minutes before he had to arrive at the job. He should just about make it. Being late wasn't an option, and although he was moving as fast as the blades would allow, it was slow going. Thin sheets of advertising film were laid out on the floor in front of each demugger, marketing their particular piece of government business. This was capitalist democracy in action. If you were interested, you paid the relevant micro-tax and became eligible to vote on that issue. Otherwise, you had no say in the matter. As the blades took him through the crowd, he avoided reading the messages. Most of them would be boring and he didn't have time to waste. The government chip under the skin of his chest vibrated, indicating that a demugger had a topic closely related to something he'd registered an interest in. It was annoying and interesting in equal measure. His tattoo said nine minutes to seven. The vibrations increased as he approached a woman wearing a plain black suit. He read her advert. Scrap tax-funded retirement. It's a luxury we can't afford. Current status, 52% for, 48% against. 20 minutes remaining. His gran, in her tax-funded dormitory, came to mind. She couldn't work and she wouldn't cope on the streets. He must pay the micro-tax and vote against it because it was certain that the rich, with all the time in the world to take part in democracy, would vote in its favour. He hesitated. He needed the work. His grand needed the vote. He paid and voted. It was five minutes to seven. He'd never make it. He sighed. Once again, he was going to miss out. Pressing his finger against the woman's screen, he logged on and offered his day's work to anyone who could get there on time. And with a shrug, he docked the blades at the side of the street and turned to walk back the way he'd come. There was always tomorrow. Thank you.